We have some interesting news to discuss today as more and more reports are starting to circulate regarding a potential Alec Manoa trade from the Toronto Blue Jays following them signing Yariel Rodriguez to a big deal. So we're going to break that down in this episode of Jays Digest and discuss what the report entails and what a potential trade could look like. We also have a Blake Snell update as one website predicts the Jays to land the stars. Stay tuned for that and much more. What's up Jays fans? Nick Goss here, host of Jays Digest and we have a lot to discuss today, a lot to get into, but before we do, a quick reminder to hit the subscribe button. About 70% of you guys who are watching are not subscribed. We're on the road to 12,000, so it mean the world if you guys could do that. And we all know that the Jays and Alec Manoa have had an interesting relationship over the past couple of years. Specifically last season, he was statistically the worst pitcher in baseball, coming off of a Cy Young caliber type season. We know the relationship there could be fractured. And with the Jays recently signing Yariel Rodriguez to a deal and supposedly telling him that he can be a starting pitcher going forward, the question that is being brought up by many Jays fans by many reporters and everyone is will he be able Alec Manoa that is to still break the rotation this season or are they better off trading him for a potential bat for a potential bullpen piece whatever it is and report from John Morosi yes uh, John Morosi the same uh, Otani plain guy he came out and said some very interesting things. Let's get right into the first topic here, which is a wild trade rumor. Now, again, he's not necessarily reporting this, but he's kind of brought up a lot. And there's been a lot of different varying reports regarding Alec Manoa and the Blue Jays potentially uh, being traded. Me and Peter have discussed it on the channel a little bit. And th the signing of Yariel Rodriguez almost makes it more likely that they do potentially deal Alec Manoa. And we've been on record saying that dealing Alec Manoa at this point when he is at his lowest value is probably not the best bet simply because obviously his value is the lowest it's ever going to be and I cannot suspect that he's going to have a worse year next year than he is this year and there's a good chance that if they trade him he will go out and have a great uh, kind of season for the team that he goes to but this is what John Morosi said on the MLB Network so the, the kind of the article or the, the podcast segment was what's next for the Blue Jays after the reported four-year deal with Yariel Rodriguez and basically he goes on to speculate about the Jays trading Manoa to the Padres and I listened to the whole clip essentially what he's saying is that the relationship there, it's up in the air still. We don't know if the Jays are going to be using Manoa in the number five starter spot now that Yariel Rodriguez is on the team. Obviously, we look back to Ross Atkins' press conference a few months ago, I guess a couple months ago, where he said that Alec Manoa, it's his job to lose as the number five starter spot. They have full faith in him, etc. But now that they signed Yariel Rodriguez, and obviously he didn't pitch in 2023 aside from a short stint in the World Baseball Classic, it's going to be very interesting to see if maybe Yariel Rodriguez starts the season in the minors. And if that's the case, then again, it's still Alec Manoa's kind of job to lose at this point. But the question that keeps getting brought up by a lot of Jays fans, Jays reporters, everyone in the MLB, you know, the baseball universe in general, is what are the Jays going to do? Let's say Yariel Rodriguez dominates AAA or he has a great spring training and then he's lined up to be that starter spot. And then you have Alec Manoa kind of just waiting in the wind. Do they potentially trade Alec Manoa? But the, and that's what John Morosi says. He basically says that... Uh, obviously, Padres and Manoa have had talks in the past regarding Alec Manoa, specifically regarding a potential Soto package before they shipped him to New York. And now I think it'd be, they'd be very interested in Alec Manoa because of the big ballpark, NL, complete change of scenery. And it does make a little bit of sense if you're the Padres, for sure, you're buying low on a guy who has the capacity and the ability and the capabilities to have a Cy Young season. But if you're the Blue Jays, you would need to get something back in value. And that's what John Morosi, Morosi reported. And I have a potential kind of mock trade I'm going to throw in here. And before I get into that, I want you to leave in the comments. Do you think this would even, uh, the Jays and Ross Atkins would even consider this? Or do you think it's a, a not a good time to trade? I mean, the only way, and Ross Atkins said, the only way they're going to deal Manoa, or I think Shai Davidi reported, the only way they're going to deal Manoa is if they get the value of him in 2022, meaning a Cy Young potential pitcher. He's still under contract for several more years. He's super young, and it looks like he's getting into great shape this offseason. So again, trading Manoa at his lowest point is very interesting, and I don't know if I would do it, but Morosi's speculating that he could be going to the Padres. And if you look at some guys, now this is not a, a trade that I made for an actual kind of proposed deal, but just to show some of the value that the Manoa has according to this machine. He has 11.8 surplus value. You have a guy like De Los Santos who's a relief pitcher, a solid bullpen guy who has 5.7. And then you could add in maybe Jay Cronenworth who is that negative 20.4 because of that monstrous contract where he's on the seven year 80 million or whatever. But you're getting a very solid player in Jay Cronenworth, albeit the contract's a bit hefty. And then you're getting a potential relief pitcher. Like I want to ask you, Maybe not this deal or this you know exact deal for sure, but would a framework like this intrigue you at all, or would you want to get a more power bet in return for Alec Manoa? Because, I mean, you're getting a very good utility player in Cronenworth and then a solid reliever in De Los Santos. And when you're looking at Manoa, though, last season, 5.87 ERA. The season before, Cy Young caliber. The season before, borderline Cy Young caliber. And we can kind of attribute his struggles potentially 
to the amount of innings pitch. He did not pitch much in the minors coming up. He did not pitch much uh, in college too, too much. And I think if he has some time to rest, he did not pitch a lot last season, he could be a big guy going forward for this team. And I just don't know if trading him now to any team, and maybe the Padres, they don't have a huge asset. Obviously, Soto would have, would have been the big one to trade for Alec Manoa. And no team is going to trade the Blue Jays a huge asset for Alec Manoa because you don't know what you're going to get with him. You have two years over 200 in, or 300 innings about pitched a very good elite uh, baseball. But then you have last season, uh, 87 innings of really, really bad uh, baseball. So it kind of goes to see what they could do. I think if in the Blue Jays, you hold on to them, you get them, see how they go this season, work with them with Pete Walker, probably the best, if not one of the best pitching coaches in baseball. We have the best pitching staff in baseball. And if he can get back to a shell of himself, even pumping out a, a 3.5, even a low four ERA, that's fine. He would be our number five starter anyway. We have Gosman, we have Barrios, we have Bassett, we have Kikuchi. We have one of the best pitching staffs in baseball, if not the best. And having Manoa there as a number five, you're not asking him to be the ace of the staff like he was last season where he was the opening day starter. And you give him a chance. And at the very least then, even if you do want to move him in the future, and let's say after this year, obviously Gosman's not getting, his contract's getting into the end of it. He's not getting younger. And then you also have Yusei Kikuchi on his last year of the deal. So you're probably going to need Manoa going forward. And Morosi, one other thing he mentioned in this article is he basically said that in a trade like this, the Jays are going to be looking to get a, a 4A pitcher back. I mean, a guy who's maybe a trip not good enough for the MLB, but too good for AAA, kind of just to have a Mitch White type player, kind of just to have uh, ready in case uh, the starting pitching gets injured because we're not going to get as lucky as we did last season with the health. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. I just wanted to throw that out there. It's a very interesting time. We haven't discussed Manoa getting traded too much here on the channel, so I wanted to throw that out there. And this is another one here, which is Snell, Blake Snell, projected to go to the Jays. And I kind of find it funny that we're doing this in the same video because we're talking about the surplus of pitching we have, whereas we also... Obviously, we have a surplus of pitching. And then this comes out saying the perfect landing spots for the best remaining free agents. And they have Bellinger going to the Cubs. Hayter going to the Yankees, even though he just signed elsewhere yesterday. And they have Blake Snell going to the Blue Jays as a perfect landing spot. And to be honest, I don't mind uh, potential Blake Snell to the Toronto Blue Jays. It would solidify us as the best rotation in baseball by far. Maybe one of the best rotations in the last 10 years. But... It, you have to have other priorities, but let's say they go out and get a Blake Snell and they go out and get a Jorge Soler. That would be an A-plus offseason for me, aside from maybe getting Shohei Otani, which would have been an A-plus, plus, 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 plus. But, I mean, you look at Blake Snell. He's an elite starting pitcher. Obviously, there's some uh, – people compare him to Cody Bellinger at times because there's the, the, the ups and downs there, and I understand. I think Blake Snell's floor is a little bit higher than Cody Bellinger's was. But Blake Snell is a very elite starting pitcher in this league. He would be a lefty. He would be our second lefty alongside Kikuchi. And I don't know. Uh, the thought of Blake Snell on the team would be good. And if you get Blake Snell, you probably even entertain the Manoa thing even more. Or maybe you don't. You think next season that uh, Manoa will have to get back in the rotation. But all kind of flowing together. You have them interested in the Snell. I don't think that's going to happen. But it was interesting that they kind of predicted him to land with the Blue Jays. And then you also have the potential and reports coming out about an Alec Manoa trade. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens going forward. Hopefully the Jays make a move soon. I think we're one DH away from having a pretty solid offseason. I've been fairly happy with the move so far. Especially the addition of Yario Rodriguez in an offseason that players are asking for a lot of money. And teams aren't giving it away. And it's showing as the market is moving very slow. But that'll wrap it up. If you want to check out a video from yesterday, click on your screen now. Thank you guys for watching. See you tomorrow.